Today we're going to be talking about what a function is and specifically a proportional relationship in terms of a linear function. So we're going to start off with two definitions. The first is that a relation is a set of inputs and outputs and they can be written in an ordered pair like x, y. So you might have recognized this kind of format from when you've plotted points on a graph in the past. When we're talking about specific types of relations, there's something called a function. And a function exists when a relation between values has every one input has exactly one output. So that means every time you have an x, it only has one y that can be true for that. So when we write these ordered pairs, x and y, you might see them in something like this called a set of points, or you might see a table. This is a um, map. And then over here, you might see the plot or the coordinate grid. So you might be asked to plot points on the coordinate grid, or maybe just like plotting the points there. So if I wanted to plot one of these tables or this set, we have the point zero, zero. So that would just be right at the origin. One, two means one on the x-axis, but two on the y-axis. So I go one to the right on the x, and then up two on my y. My next point was 2, 4, so on my x I go to 2, and then I go up to 4 on the y. And my last point listed was 3, 6, so I would go 3 on x and all the way up to 6 on my y-axis. So these points are considered a relation because you're mapping every x has an output y. And then this would be a function because none of these inputs have more than one output. So we could draw a line through this and say that this is a linear function because every single x will only have one y value that's going to work for this. So this is just an example of what we're kind of getting into. But you'll see those points written in different types of ways, so I just wanted to introduce you to that. We're going to talk specifically about proportional relationships. So we can say that a relation is going to be proportional as long as the ratio of y to x is the same for all points. So when you've heard the word ratio before, that might remind you of like A to B or A over B. So when we hear ratio of y to x, we're going to be thinking about y over x. So we're going to be taking y and dividing it by x. A proportional relationship will always pass through the origin. And remember, we call the origin point zero, zero. So when we're talking about these specific linear relationships that are proportional, they're always going to pass through the origin. So because this line went through the middle of our graph, we can say that it's proportional. We can also say it's proportional because it has the same um, ratio of y to x. So if I did 2 over 1 here, that would be 2, 4 over 2 would be 2, and 6 over 3 would be 2. So we'll get into those in some more examples. So a proportional relationship can be represented with the equation y equals mx. There's three different letters here. We'll normally see it where there's more of like a number, but the number is going to be where the m is. But m is specifically going to be called our slope. So the slope, you, if you've heard of the word slope, you might have heard of a ski slope or like the slope on the side of a mountain. But that's just another way of talking about the steepness of a line. So it's not the technical definition there, but you can think of how steep is this line because of its slope. If a line is going up from left to right, it's going to have a positive slope. But if you have a line that's going down from left to right, this would have a negative slope. Okay, and we'll talk about how you can find that. So the slope can also represent the rate of change of a proportional relationship between two quantities. So we hear different ways that you can define slope. Slope is that letter M like we talked about up here. We also know slope as um, change in y over the change in x, so how far are you moving vertically up and down over how far are you moving horizontally. So remember vertical is up and down, horizontal would be side to side. But the most common way that you're going to hear us say it is rise over run. So how far are you rising, so that would be how much are you moving up and down, and then it's going to be over your run, which if you think about running, you can only run on a flat surface, maybe on a hill, 
but you definitely wouldn't run up a, a vertical wall like this. So your rise is gonna be that vertical amount that you move and your run will be that horizontal amount that you move. So we're gonna get into some specific examples of defining a proportional relationship and then finding the slope of that relationship. So when you look at these examples here, it's asking us to determine whether the values make a proportional relationship. So we said two things. We have to check all the y over x ratios. They all need to be equal. And we also said that we'd love to see it go through the origin at 0, 0. So we can look right away to see if our table has 0, 0. Unfortunately, this one doesn't. So we are going to have to check whether the y over x's are equal to one another. So my first y value in my table is 3. And the x value that it goes with is 1. So I'm going to put 3 over 1. But 3 over 1 is the same as 3. So we're going to go continue to check the rest. y is 9 and x is 3. So I'm going to say y over x would be 9 over 3 and 9 divided by 3 is 3. My last y is 15, and the last x is 5. If I put 15 over 5, that simplifies to 3. So since all of my y over x's were 3, that can tell us that this is proportional. This would also tell us that our slope is 3, and if you wanted to, you could plot this on a, um, on a coordinate grid and see if all of those points are going to end up going through the origin if you connect them with a line. So when we do that, this one will go through the origin, so yes, it is proportional. We can continue to check this next one, so you want to just plug in y over x, so we have 4 sevenths. Now if you want to simplify that in the calculator, you're going to get a decimal. We can check 5 eighths, and then we could check 6 ninths. Now if you go ahead and check all of those, 4 sevenths becomes 0.57 something, and continues, and then 5 eighths becomes 625 thousandths, and 6 ninths becomes 0.3 repeating. So because all of those y over x's are not equal, this table of values would not represent a proportional relationship. So we don't even have to go through and check to see if it would go through the origin because right away we know that our y over x's make it not proportional. In our last example, we want to check y over x, so I want to put 4 over 16, 5 over 20, and 6 over 24. If you simplify this, 4 sixteenths is the same as 1 fourth, 5 over 20 is the same as 1 fourth, and 6 over 24 is the same as 1 fourth. If you put them all into the calculator, you could see that they're 25 hundredths. So since they're all the same here, this table will be proportional. Again, if you wanted to graph these on the coordinate grid and plot the point 16, 4, 25, and 24, 6, and then draw that line between them, you'll see that those will also go through the origin at 0, 0. So there's your example of how you can figure out whether these are proportional or not. So sometimes we'll give you a table, and not only are we going to ask if it's proportional, but we also want you to find the slope and write the equation for it. So it says, if you are given a table like this, you need to figure out what the equation is. First thing you want to do is check to see if the values are proportional by finding the ratio of y to x and confirming that they're all equal. Once you know that, then the ratio is allowed to be considered the slope. So if you write the equation using the form y equals mx, slope will be that number that you just got for your ratio of y over x. So if we want to check this, first of all, we're going to check to make sure that it's proportional. So y over x will be either 12 over 3, 16 over 4, or 20 over 5. And if I check all of those, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So all three of those told me that yes, that is proportional, because when I checked y over x, I got the same number for all three. Now to find the slope, we talked about slope as being the rise over the run. Another way that we defined it that was change in y over your change in x. So in order to check that, we're going to see how far am I changing in my y value and how far am I changing in my x value. So that means from this y value to this y value, to go from 12 to 16, all I did was add 4. And to go from this x value to this x value, from 3 to 4, I added 1. So my change in y here was 4, and my change in x was 1. 4 over 1, though, equals 4. 
you can check the next one. 16 to 20 would also be plus 4, and 4 to 5 would be 1, plus 1. So if we check that, 4 over 1 for our change in y over our change in x, again, we get 4. And if you recall, that was the number that we got when we had y over x. So all of that lets us know that our slope is going to be 4. Remember that we called slope m. So if m equals 4, we're just using that equation y equals mx, and all we're going to do is replace the m with a 4 to say that the equation for this table would be y equals 4x. So that's going to be the rule that if you wanted to come up with another x value, you could plug it in to figure out what y is. If you don't believe it, you can go back and test it, just like we've checked our equations in the past. If I want to check to make sure that when x is 3, I get 12, if I plug in y equals 4 times 3, well, 4 times 3 is 12, and we said that when x is 3, y should be 12. So that rule does work for our points there. So if you want to pause and try the next one, you can, or if you want to listen to the explanation again, go for it. So first thing we want to do is figure out if this is proportional, so check your y over x's. So we have negative 18 over negative 9. That equals positive 2. We've got negative 24 over negative 12, which is positive 2 and negative 28 over negative 14, which is also positive 2. So for all of those, our y over x's were the same number we got positive 2. Now to check our slope, we want to check our change in y over our change in x. It should be the same as our proportional um, y over x ratio, but we want to check it just in case. So our change in y here from negative 18 to negative 24 would be adding 6. And then to change in x, I would be going from negative 9 to negative 12. That would be adding 3. So my change in y was 6 over my change in x was 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. Again, if you don't trust it or you want to check it again, check another set. So from this y to this y, negative... Oops, sorry, I just made, realized I made a mistake. When we went from negative 18 to negative 24 we were subtracting 6 and from negative 9 to negative 12 we were subtracting 3 but that just puts two negatives and a negative divided by a negative is still a positive. I apologize for the mistake. Go ahead and fix that in your notes. If you want to check the next one, negative 24 to negative 28 would be subtracting 4 and from negative 12 to negative 14 you'd just be subtracting 2. So that change in y would be negative 4 over your change in x which is negative 2 and negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So for y over x's, we got 2's, and when we checked our change in y over our change in x, we got 2. So that's going to tell us that our slope is 2. We know slope is m. If we're using that form y equals mx, all we have to do is say that our slope is 2 times x. So for every y, or for every x value, you get multiply it by 2 to get y. Now sometimes they're not going to tell you the table of values and you have to figure those out for yourself. So you can pick any value you want to plug in for x to see what y will be. So I always suggest picking a negative number, 0, and a positive number. So just to keep it simple, we can try negative 1, 0, and 1. If we do that, all we're going to do is take x and plug it into the rule. So if y is supposed to equal negative 2x, that means if I do negative 2 times my x value of negative 1, I should get my y value negative 2 times negative 1 would be 2. So that means a point on my graph would be negative 1, 2. Another point on my graph would be if I take y equals negative 2 times my x value of 0 now that I want to try out. Well, anything times 0 is 0, so y would be 0. So there's another point on our graph. This one's going through 0, 0, so that's going to tell us that this graph is proportional. The last one I want to check for is what is y if x is 1, so negative 2 times 1. Anything times 1 is just itself, so we get y equals negative 2. So another point on our graph would be 1, negative 2. So we've got this whole set of points right here that would be listed from our table of values, and we could say that this is proportional because we go through the origin at 0, 0. If you want to pause and try the next one on your own, you can, or you can keep watching. So again, it's great to pick some positive and negative values here as well as zero, just to see if it will be proportional or not. 
So if we put negative 3, 0, and positive 3 this time, this will give us some different points. We can check y will equal 1 third times x, and in this case I'm making my x value be negative 3. But because I'm multiplying by a fraction, we should put negative 3 over 1. So on top I have 1 times negative 3, which is negative 3, and on the bottom I have 3 times 1, which is positive 3. So I just need to simplify this. Negative, divide, sorry, negative 3 divided by positive 3 will equal negative 1. So that means a point in this set will be negative 3, negative 1. When I want to plug in 0 here, I have y equals 1 third times 0, but anything times 0 we know is always going to be 0, so 0, 0. Again, that tells us that this relationship will be proportional because it's going through the origin. Our last x value is 3, so we're going to say 1 third times 3, but again, since we're multiplying by a fraction, we should put it over 1. And if I do that, on the top I have 1 times 3, which is 3, and on the bottom 3 times 1 is 3. So we end up getting 1. So we have a point 3, 1. So all three of these points would be good values um, for this rule. You could plug in any x value you wanted to get another point on your line. So the other thing you can do that's really similar to what we just saw is if you're given a rule like y equals 3x in this first one, and they ask you, is this point negative 4, 8 going to be on that line? All you have to do is use that equation to plug in the points x and y to see if it's true. So we have this point and it's saying that x would be negative 4 and y would be 8. So thinking back to our unit on evaluating expressions, all we're going to do now is just evaluate this equation for those values. So my rule here is y equals 3x but I'm going to replace my y value with 8, bring down the equal sign, bring down the 3, 3 and x are multiplying, and the x value that I'm testing out is negative 4. When I simplify this, 8 equals 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, but we know that 8 does not equal negative 12, so no, this point would not be on that line. So again, you have a point, x, y, now the point that we're trying to test is 3, 9. So I'm still using the same rule, y equals 3x. For y, I'm going to plug in 9 equals 3 times my x value of 3. 9 equals 3 times 3 is 9. So we know that that's true. So yes, this point, 3, 9, would be on the line y equals 3x. So if you want to keep going through and checking these on your own, go ahead, or you can continue listening. So we have x, y, we're going to plug in for our same rule, y equals 3x, y is 18, equals 3 times 6, we know that 3 times 6 is 18, so because we got the same number on both sides, yes, this point will be on that line. Our last point says negative 3, or negative 1, 3, so for y, I'm going to plug in 3, and for x, I'm plugging in negative 1. But 3 does not equal negative 3. That is not true. So no, this point would not be on our line. So this one should kind of feel a little familiar because we have done evaluating expressions so much this year. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and try these last two on your own, go ahead. And then when you're ready to check them, you can unpause. We had x and y. And we're replacing it this time in the equation y equals 2x. So negative 8 should equal 2 times negative 4. If I multiply 2 times negative 4, I do get negative 8, so yes, that one is on the line. y equals 2x, I'm going to plug in 14 equals 2 times 7, and yes, 14 is the same as 2 times 7, so that one will be on our graph. Here, I'm plugging in negative 18 should equal 2 times negative 9. Negative 18 does equal negative 18, so that one is also on our graph. And in our last one, I'm going to plug in negative 8 should equal 2 times 16, but negative 8 does not equal 32, so this one would not. So those first three all worked and would be on the line of our graph of y equals 2x, but that last one did not work because we got different numbers on that side. Finally, we have y equals 1 half x. If it helps you to rewrite this, if you don't like using the fraction, you're more than welcome to change that to 0.5x whichever you'd prefer. 
but the process is still the same. So my y here is 14, and it should equal 1 half times 7, but since 7 is a whole number being multiplied by a fraction, I'm going to write it over 1. That means that 14 should equal 7 over 2, but if you do 7 over 2, you get 3 and 5 tenths, and those are not equal, so that point will not be on our line. This one I'm going to check that 3 should equal 1 half times 6, but 6 will be over 1. This becomes 3 equals 6 over 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So yes, this point would be on our line. I have 8 should equal 1 half times negative 4, but I'm going to write it over 1. So that gets me negative 4 over 2, but 8 does not equal negative 2, so that point will not be on our line. And finally, I'm going to plug in negative 7 should equal 1 half times negative 14 over 1. That becomes negative 7 equals negative 14 over 2. And yes, negative 14 over 2 does become negative 7. So this last point will be on our line.